Hey guys, so I am an educator at Unacademy and you can follow me over there if you are interested to watch videos on basic concepts of chemistry or physical chemistry topics. You can also recommend this to your juniors and to your younger siblings, right? All you need to do is download the Unacademy learning app and watch my videos over there. Now let's just begin with our topic. Guys, okay, so welcome to another course on polymer chemistry. It's a crash course and I'm going to go really fast. So if you want, you can slow down the video using YouTube options and uh, the video. And after this video, you won't need to study from anywhere else about polymer chemistry, right? So let's just get into it. Now, the, these are the first uh, four formulas. Now, let me tell you one thing. See, you guys think that okay this question was asked the last year and it was asked last to last year so the same question is going to come this year it's not going to happen this way things change all right so you will be lucky if the same question comes up again but i am i am of the opinion that the same questions won't be repeated for a very long time so it's important for you not just to focus on things that have already been asked but to also focus on things that might be asked right so i'm going to cover everything in this short video i'll try and keep it under 10 minutes now we have number average molecular weight uh, right this is the mn is number average molecular weight which is sigma mi ni upon sigma ni i'm going to tell you each and uh, the meaning of each and every term so mi is basically the molar mass all right mi is the molar mass ni is the number of molecules with that particular molar mass all right i repeat again mi is the uh, mi is the <coughs> the molar mass and ni is the number of monomers of that particular molar mass all right like for example um, i have taken a question from your csi net december 2017 paper this was for four marks and the question is we have been given number of molecules and we have been given the molar mass so i told you m is the molar mass so we have molar mass 5000 and 6000 for two different kinds of fragments of polymers there are two different kinds of fragments for the polymers so for one fragment we have molar mass 5000 and for the other we have molar mass 6000 now the formula is summation of mi ni so first we'll we'll multiply number of molecules 50 into 5000 so that comes out to be 25000 right 50 into 5000 that comes out to be 25000 plus now we'll have to again multiply the number of molecules these of different molar mass this has 6000 molar mass and there's 75 number of molecules so 6000 into 75 that is 45000 so 45000 summation means we are adding two terms so 75000 uh, sorry 45000 plus 25000 that gives us 70000 and 70000 upon total number of molecules how many total number of molecules are there 75 plus 50 that is 125 molecules so 70000 upon 125 and that gives us the answer 5600 this question believe me was for four marks in your csn in december 2017 and similar question was asked in your june 2017 exam as well so it's a very very basic formula now uh, the next one the next formula is similar to the number average uh, molar mass that's weight average molar mass and that's summation mi ni square you just have to square the uh, ni term ni means number of molecules you just have to square the number of molecules mo number of molecules term and you'll get the answer right do practice some questions before just don't mug up the formulas do practice some questions as well then we have mz mz is z average molar mass simply the same formula okay i missed out one th one term the same formula the only thing that you have to do is um, in weight average molecular mass you had sigma mi ni square upon sigma mi ni here you only had sigma ni term here you have sigma mi ni term okay and in this z average you are cubing the ni term okay you're cubing the ni term and over here also you are having ni square so simply you are multiplying by here you are multiplying you are, here you are dividing by ni here you are dividing by mi ni here you are dividing by mi ni square right so it's coming in progressions if you can see right similarly on the top also on the numerator also sigma mi ni sigma mi ni square and sigma mi ni cube so that's really really simple to understand then we have one more term which i don't think might be asked but still i'll give you just for the sake of it that's viscosity average molecular weight and how do you calculate that sigma mi here one new terms new term comes that is alpha sigma mi 1 plus alpha ni upon sigma mi ni uh, and the whole bracket 1 by alpha to the power 1 by alpha right so this is the formula now what is this alpha so there were two scientists mark and homewick mark so it's also called mark homewick equation this one and uh, alpha is basically a constant or exponent of mark homewick equation so in case a question is asked from this particular formula they will give you the value of alpha or they might give you 
to find out the value of alpha given these all terms are given to you right so this is really rare that they might ask you right and then we have a very important term that is poly, dis poly dispersity index that is equal to your weight average upon number average so from here we had calculated weight average and this was a number average so it's just the uh, the difference uh, or the division of weight average molecular weight upon number average molecular weight so if uh, it is equal to one then the polymer or then the solution is said to be mono dispersed and what do you mean by mono dispersed means uh, that the size and the dimensions of the polymer are uniform it's a uniform polymer right so you use dispersity mono dispersed for colloids also in colloid in if you use it in terms of colloids it means all the particles are of same size if you use it in terms of polymers it means basically the polymer is uh, quite uh, you can say uniform right it is made up of same monomeric units so it's quite quite uniform and if if it is equal to one then it is said to be mono dispersed so if it is mono dispersed then your mw by mn is equal to one that means your number average molecular weight and your weight average molecular weight is the same and this question was asked for two marks in your csi net june 2017 exam it was given that a solution is mono dispersed so what is the relation between the weight average and the number average molecular weight so they would be equal right now there's one question that can be asked in terms of analytical chemistry and that question is that how do you find the polydispersity index so you calculate the polydispersity index with a with a technique called gel permeation chromatography right all you need to know is that it is calculated with the help of gel, gel permeation chromatography then um okay uh, I'll talk about degree of polymerization later. Then we have isotactic, syndiotactic and atactic. This is something you might have studied way back in your bachelor's. And uh, what is this atactic, syndiotactic and uh, atactic? Okay, so I'll just tell you isotactic. Isotactic is basically when we have the same, um, like this is your, uh, uh, let's say this is your branch. Okay, uh, this is your polymer and we have a R group over here. Then we have a R group over here. So you can see the same repeating unit on the same side. So it's the same polymeric uh, repeating unit on the same side. What is syndiotactic? Syndiotactic is basically same repeating unit, but the R group is on the opposite side. So like over here, we have R over here. Then we have R below the plane. Then we have R above the plane. Then we have R below the plane. So this is called syndiotactic. And what is atactic? Um, atactic, it basically is, um, I'll draw it over here. Atactic is basically, you have random random orientation there's no uniformity it's just random okay it's it's random totally random so like this it's totally random right so atactic is random syndiotactic is uh, uniform but uh, on the opposite sides the r group is not present present on the same side and isotactic it's present on the same side so again a question can be framed from this that um, you know they'll give you this kind of polymer and they'll ask you what is it whether it's eutactic atactic syndiotactic or isotactic right eutactic is a little complex i'll tell you maybe in some other video okay now we have um degree of polymerization so what is degree of polymerization it basically tells you to what extent the polymerization has occurred so if you have taken two monomers let's say and you have you have done polymerization so how much of the monomer was actually consumed for the uh, consumed in the polymerization process and how much was left over so it's somewhat like a yield for a polymer how much how much was the yield for the polymer so the formula for homopolymers homopolymers means it's made up of same monomer okay and let's say for example if i make a, 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 a you can say a polysaccharide of glucose okay if i make a polysaccharide of glucose i make polymer of glucose then glucose is a single monomeric unit right so that is that is it is called a homopolymer that is it is made up of the same monomer so um, for that the formula is mn upon mo now mn you know what is mn mn is number average molecular weight but what is mo mo is basically mass of the single monomeric unit so for example the number average the number average molecular weight of a polysaccharide of glucose is, is let's say 10000 okay let's say it's 10000 so you have to divide it by the molecular mass of glucose single unit of glucose right okay and then there's another formula which is this xn this this term xn is basically a, 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 it's a symbol to denote degree of polymerization okay it's a symbol to denote degree of polymerization so one formula for homo polymers is mn upon mo and the other formula is one upon one minus p 
and this is applicable to all kinds of polymers so 1 upon 1 minus p what does p mean over here p basically tells you the conversion conversion uh, percentage of a monomer okay p tells you the conversion percentage of a monomer so let's say we want to find the degree of polymerization when the value of p is 99 percent 99 percent so xn equal to 1 upon 1 minus now i'm saying 99 percent so 99 percent means 1 minus 0 0.99 99% right so 1 1 upon 1 minus 0 0.9 and so I'm saying that 99% of the monomer has been converted to polymer or has been utilized in the polymerization process so this is the formula 1 upon 1 minus 0 0.99 so this will give us degree of polymerization as 100 because it will be 1 upon 0 0.01 1 upon 0 0.01 yeah so it will give you value 100 okay so that means degree of polymerization is 100 if your monomeric percentage conversion is 99 percent so this was a short and a quick overview about polymers i don't think anything will be asked outside of this if something is asked then it is not worthwhile because i think this this much uh, weightage should be given to polymers it's hardly a four mark or a six mark question so um i hope you found this video helpful this quick video if you want uh, if you like this video please give it a big thumbs up it will really motivate me and also subscribe to my channel for more videos for more crash course videos before your csi net exam thank you so much for watching